Hello, psychology students. Welcome to another uh, audiovisual lecture. And I have to say, we are almost at the end of the semester. So congratulations making it this far. So we're going to hit you know, a topic that appears late in the class, as you can imagine. Uh, it's not the most uplifting subject to cover. Obviously, it comes with you know, a warning that it is a sad topic. So what we're going to cover in this uh, video is widowhood. Unfortunately, it's something that a lot of us will have to experience and go through, you know, seeing our own parents go through this and people we know and love, unfortunately. So it is sort of a, you know, a touchy, sensitive topic, obviously, for, for good reason, because it's, um, it's depressing. It's, it's not something that we obviously would want to experience, but it is unfortunately an aspect of life. So let's go into wid widowhood. We're going to look at some different research findings, what we know about it, what to kind of expect with widowhood. Okay, so first of all, uh, having a sudden death of a spouse is more difficult to cope with than anticipating it. So, you know, really this is true in general, of uh, uh, death in general to, to begin with, because um, when we lose someone suddenly, it, it's obviously very damaging and and depressing and it, it's shocking. So we're not gonna see any exceptions here. You know, we see some parallels where if we suddenly lose our spouse, you know, someone that potentially we've been together with for 60, 70 years in some cases, it's obviously going to hurt pretty bad. So when you lose someone, it's bad enough, but losing them suddenly where you just didn't see it coming, uh, obviously is very traumatic and affects us in a big way. So like I said, it's very common of death to begin with uh, when we lose a loved one or someone we care about. So when it comes to widowhood, we definitely see some gender differences involved in how we react and cope with this. So the first thing that we're going to look at is depression and anxiety. So we know that depression, anxiety, as you would sort of imagine, often go hand in hand with losing our spouse. So what the studies are basically showing at this time is that depression seems to peak pretty early after the death. So during the first year, meaning the first year after losing that spouse, we know that depression seems to really peak and, and become strong during this time. And then when we look at depression and anxiety, it often occurs in this order. Remember, we're looking at averages. So keep, the, keep in mind as we go through the material in this lecture, it's definitely looking at averages and there's always exceptions because there's different types of relationships, different coping patterns, different personalities, et cetera, et cetera. So when we look at the numbers and the averages, we find that depression often comes first followed by anxiety. And we know that these are pretty prevalent after losing a spouse, unfortunately. When we look at gender differences in this, uh, and a lot of people are kind of surprised by this, but men seem to show the biggest change in depressive levels following the loss of a loved one. It's kind of misleading because we know in general, more women are depressed than men if we look at the sheer numbers. However, I think what we're talking about here is the change from before the death to after. So if, if a husband loses his wife, for example, he may not be very depressed before that incident or that event, but after we see a big change. So in other words, if we look at the before and after, we see a huge jump in depressive levels where with women, obviously depression will accompany this, but we don't see a, as big a, a change when we compare them to men. So it's kind of misleading. It's just looking at the before and after, certainly, you know, both sexes are vulnerable to depression after losing a loved one and certainly someone that you've been with a long period of time, as you can imagine. Research has also revealed that there are some significant in income changes after the death of a spouse. So once again, there's always exceptions to this. We're looking at averages, but they have found in the studies that women women's income declines about 22% after the death. So, you know, if we look at uh, a relationship where the husband was the breadwinner or earned more money, which often is the case, not always, of course, 
and then that person is lost, the income is obviously going to be uh, greatly changed in that situation. So we do see that women's income does decline about 22% on average, where in the studies when they looked at men, it seemed to be more stable. So if a man loses his wife, for example, uh, the income does not drop as significantly. So that's a, another big gender uh, difference that we see after the death of a loved one. Interestingly, we see a risk of mortality after the loss of a loved one. You've probably heard that expression that someone has died due to a broken heart kind of thing. You know, it's very similar to that. So we know that your chances of dying do increase after losing a spouse, unfortunately. Studies have also revealed that if the death was unexpected, and we talked about that at the very beginning here, so if the death was unexpected, mortality risk is higher for men compared to women. So they found a difference between men and women, meaning men are more likely uh, to uh, succumb to an illness or a problem where it actually causes them to pass away more so compared to women. So I thought that was an interesting difference between the genders. In reality, we know that women are more likely to be the surviving spouse. So in other words, most widows, widowers are women. And you know, obviously, there's a couple reasons for that. So first of all, the, the studies are revealing that there are three times as many women as men who are widowed. So three times as many. So obviously, a big, big difference there. But you also have to think that, number one, women live longer than men on average. So they're more likely to survive the lifespan of their spouse if, it, you know, if it's a heterosexual relationship, for example. And women tend to marry older compared to men. In other words, when they get married, we, we find it's very common for the husband to be older in age. So if you look at those two factors together, it kind of contributes uh, to what we're seeing in the studies in that women are more likely to be uh, widowed compared to men. Unfortunately, one of the drastic consequences, and obviously there's many, uh, to losing your spouse is dealing with loneliness, unfortunately. So can you imagine you've been with this person, you know, potentially for 70 years in some cases, if not longer, and this person passes away, and now maybe you're alone for the first time since maybe you were 20, for example. I mean, obviously it varies, and, you know, every relationship is different, but in some cases it's, you know, it's decades. So how do you cope with being by yourself for the first time? Maybe, maybe the kids are already grown up and moved out, and now you're on your own for the first time in decades. Research has revealed it, uh, loneliness seems to sort of affect certain populations more. So for example, the studies are showing that being poor and being uneducated uh, is sort of a risk factor for being lonely after the loss of a spouse. So they found that connection that if you're living in poverty and you're uneducated, you're more susceptible to, uh, to loneliness levels. In other words, you would have higher loneliness levels than average. And, you know, if, if you kind of think about that, that may be due to not understanding uh, how to cope with this or not having resources, for example. I mean, there's many reasons why that could be. I'll let you kind of speculate on your own. Uh, but that's what the studies are kind of showing, that there is that correlation. Furthermore, being lonely and depressed, for example, obviously puts you at risk for health problems. So that's a big concern, is that if you're lonely, I mean, obviously that's very stressful, you're depressed, you, um, you know, and as we've learned that stress really affects your body in many different ways, it may be setting you up for a health problem down the road, where it creates you know, even bigger problems, if you would, in terms of surviving this. The good news is, is they found that uh, joining a social support group or even volunteering to help others, for example, seems to really help with these loneliness levels, as you can imagine. So in other words, if you join this group where 
<clears throat> you're discussing these topics and you're bonding with other people who have who've gone through the same thing and can offer you advice and support and services, that's really got to help you compared to sort of dealing with it by yourself or not doing those things. So as an example, I mean, there's many uh, examples of organizations that do this, but one of the most famous ones is called the Widowed Person Service, which you can find online if you just Google that. Once again, Widowed Person Service, where they would provide the person support services, they get them involved in activities to keep their mind off it and keep them engaged, for example. They promote discussion uh, among these uh, different topics and their feelings and things like that. And that is a great source uh, to take advantage of if you were by yourself and you had nowhere to turn to, because uh, some people obviously feel very lonely after this has happened. So it's great to be able to reach out to other people and bond and connect with people who can help you in that manner rather than dealing with it by yourself. Okay, so that will sort of conclude our short lecture here on uh, widowhood and so forth. Uh, so please progress to the next part of the class.